The intended learning outcomes are an excellent starting point for designing a good teaching and learning experience. But where can we get inspiration from to formulate them? Do we express the intended learning outcomes just in terms of knowledge and applications? Or can we try to better express the outcomes we expect our students to acquire? Actually, we have two important logical tools at our disposal, the Bloom's Taxonomy and the Dublin Descriptors. Let's start by exploring the Dublin Descriptors. The Dublin Descriptors take their name from the city of Dublin, where they were presented in 2003. They aim to facilitate the definition of the intended learning outcomes at the end of a course, so as to make them more conforming with other similar courses within the European educational system. But in which way do the intended learning outcomes need to be defined to make the learning paths within the European educational system comparable with each other? The Dublin descriptors encourage us to focus on some specific perspectives. First of all, they require us to explain which knowledge our programs aim at. But obviously, they aren't limited to this. The next step is, in fact, making sure that our students will be able to apply the acquired knowledge. Furthermore, it's very important that the students will develop the so-called critical thinking, the ability to evaluate and compare different contexts and apply to this context the knowledge they have already acquired. Another very important topic is the acquisition of communication skills that allow to communicate what the students learned before knowledge. In the end, the Dublin descriptors dwell on one last aspect, learning to learn. In other words, we need to make sure that students, thanks to our educational program, we also develop abilities in terms of autonomous learning. So, why are the Dublin descriptors useful when we are designing the intended learning outcomes for our course? They are useful because they help us to remember that it's very important to give the possibility to our students to develop knowledge and also the ability to apply that knowledge. In addition, they tell us to keep in mind when designing them that we need to put students in the condition to also acquire assessment and communication abilities critical thinking and independent learning. So you see how this system of descriptors can be a creative stimulus that can bring us to define broader and richer intended learning outcomes and that may reflect more effectively our teaching philosophy with the final objective we would like to bring our students to. Careful, we must not mistake a system of descriptors with an exhaustive model that can describe different types of knowledge. We can say that Dublin descriptors are like labels that can help us in classify and describe in a clearer and more comparable way the intended learning outcomes we are designing. It is not an exhaustive model of the types of knowledge because if it were, it would be lacking fundamental elements for the development of skills for the new millennium. The Dublin descriptors can inspire us to design broader and richer intended learning outcomes and at the same time they can help us to label and map some fairly articulated intended learning outcomes. For example, Let's have a look at this learning outcome. 
the students will be able to correctly present in a written form the basic concepts of cinematics using the disciplinary language and the international notational system. In this case, we can level this learning outcome with the descriptor number one, knowing, and also with the descriptor number four, communicating. So, to sum up, the Dublin descriptors are a system of descriptors of the intended learning outcomes – knowing, applying, evaluating, communicating, learning to learn. They don't just inspire us to widen the creation of our intended learning outcomes, but they can also help us map and label the intended learning outcomes we create so that they may be more comparable within the European educational system. Mm -hmm.